Back at your ass again. Black at your ass again. And we up at four in the morning, you know, trying to bring you a show. Subscribe to the Reaper because we doing good messages and bringing good things here at Reaper. And we would like you to go to our clothing line, jazzbotareaper.com, and order some of our merchandise. We got the bracelets. We got the hoodies. You know, we got the hats. We got the shirts. So support your main nigga on the trigger. All right, now, Reaper is up because I was watching the game last night, just like most of you niggas, and we seen, you know, Rajon Rondo spit on Chris Paul, and Chris Paul, you know, went nuts, you know, that's what happened, and uh, Rondo was ready for Chris Paul to go nuts because allegedly they don't like each other, that's what I heard through the grapevine, and you know, and uh, Chris Paul and James Harden was cooking their ass last night. I mean, when Paul got ejected, I think him and Harden had something combined, like 64 points. And at the end of the game, I think they had like about almost 70, you know, together. And Chris Paul got ejected in the fourth quarter. I think Rondo was, you know, um, frustrated, you know, because he was getting cooked by Chris Paul. And, uh, you know, Chris Paul has been the measuring stick, you know, for point guards, you know, in the NBA ever since, you know, he started playing, you know. But he ain't won no championship like Rondo, but he gets more recognition than Rondo as a better point guard, you know. And so, you know, I think they got a little bit of rivalry going. You know, that's what the Reaper heard through the grapevine. And... You know, uh, Rondo, it, it looked like Rondo spit on him because Chris Paul wiped his nose and said, you know, what you spit on me for and pointed in his face. And then Rondo was ready to throw punches. The Reaper keep it 1000. So I think Rajon Rondo was getting cooked and he's got a quirky personality, you know, and, I, and what I find is the interesting factor in this. You know, there's two interesting factors in this and what the Reaper find as the interesting factors in this is that Brandon Ingram, you know, this nigga is 6'9", 101 pounds. <laughs> I mean, this nigga is, if he turned sideways, you wouldn't see him. He toothpick skinny, you know, and he gonna push my man James Harden. You see the Reaper is representing. I got the Rockets jersey on, you know, I'm representing, you know, tonight, you know, um, you know, he gonna push my man James Harden, you know, I mean, you know, after Harden bulldozed his skinny ass to the basket and got a and one, and he gonna push James Harden, cause James Harden was contested to the referee saying, this skinny motherfucker fouled me too, and I bulldozed his ass, right? <laughs> and, you know, uh, he was frustrated, and he pushed, uh, he pushed James Harden, 
And then, you know, I mean, old Timmy Alonzo Ball, you know, hey, with his scary ass, he wasn't going to do nothing. Because, you know, you remember last year when they started mixing it up, his teammates, he ran to the bench. And they asked him, they said, well, why did you run to the bench? He said, well, NBA players ain't going to fight no way, but you're supposed to stay there and try to get your teammate back or stick up for your teammates. So I guess Ball learned something this year because, you know, he had to, had to go back there and one of them niggas chastised his ass last year, you know. And and so he, you know, uh, he stayed in the melee a little bit this year, but he tried to get Ingram's back. And Ingram's was still frustrated. And then Paul and Rondo started going at it, you know. And, uh, you know, they started jaw jacking with each other and next thing you know i saw chris paul wipe his nose say what you spit on me for and then next thing you know uh you know he put his finger in rondo's face and rondo started throwing fisticuffs you know because he was frustrated because chris paul was eating that ass up the reaper tv 1000 i mean you know i mean his bitches was gonna be questioning him in hollywood afterwards saying why you let that nigga eat you up like that <laughs> And Rajon Rondo, you know, Rondo looked like he's something, you know, I mean, something unique anyway, you know. Some of these niggas look like they're off of Star Trek, but, you know, but, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, Sam Cassell, you know, he really looked like the alien. They called him E.T., the extraterrestrial, you know, that nigga looked like he came from, you know, uh, another planet. The Reaper Keep It 1000, you know, he did look like that big extraterrestrial, you know, I mean, E.T. And so, um, but, you know, they start fighting and, uh, you know, uh, Brandon Ingram gonna come running in there with his skinny ass and try to drill Chris Paul again. So Brandon Ingram, you know, he gonna be suspended probably, you know, until the middle of the season. <laughs> 1,000, you know, I mean, the pressure with playing with LeBron James is too much. And what I find interesting enough, you know, because the Reaper always speak about, you know, uh, you know, being raised by a single parent and the beta male. What I find interesting in all of this is LeBron James, of all people, he didn't try to grab Rajon Rondo. He tried to grab Chris Paul and keep him back. And just because that's his buddy, he walked him to the sideline. Now, you know, and walked all over there in the Houston bench and saying, I told you the NBA ain't like it used to be. It's soft as cotton. The Reaper keep it 1,000. Because if that would have happened a long time ago, LeBron James would have had the answer. See, they ain't got no veterans on that team. He would have had the answer to a veteran type of player. The Reaper keep it 1,000. I don't care if he is a superstar because we all know you know what the number one rule is when you play basketball, us that's done played. You have no friends on the basketball court. The Reaper keep it 1,000. And especially, LeBron, you say you're trying to teach these young bucks how to win when they fall down. You said, no, don't you get up. Let your teammate pick you up because you always got to look out for your teammate where you was looking out for your buddy. The Reaper keep it 1,000. You had no business holding Chris Paul back. You know, I mean, you should have let them, you should have went over there and held Rondo back. But, they, you know, uh, LeBron James got a complex. And I'm going to tell y'all what that complex is. I'm going to expose you tonight, LeBron James. You know, you got a complex because Rajon Rondo is just as smart. He's smarter than you is on the basketball court. And we know that don't bode well, you know, with some beta men. You know, that's been raised by single parents. I mean, you know, he going to cling to his buddy, you know, that he had wine with. And they go out with wine and cheese and crackers with his wife and on vacations and stuff like that. Man, you supposed to be teaching these young bucks how to stick together and win. How you going to go over there and walk Chris Paul away and that's your buddy instead of, you know, hey, sticking up for your teammate. The Reaper keep it 1,000. I ain't saying that you should have got suspended, but you shouldn't have been walking over there with your arm around Chris Paul like he was one of your teammates. And you're supposed to be teaching the young bucks how to win. If that was Jordan and then Barkley got into a fight, do you ever see him when him and Barkley was cool uh, walk over there and, and hug Barkley or... 
anybody Jordan was cool with, you know, because he was down winning for the Chicago Bulls. LeBron James is not a leader. You uh, you know, I mean, you wouldn't have seen Kobe walking over there with one of his buddies he was cool with or whatever or any other person in the NBA that was a big time player like LeBron James or whatever. And they just trying to break it up, just trying to this, that and the other. See, you know, these niggas today be dressing in all kind of different kind of suits that's suspect the reaper keep it 1000 for them to be an athlete and you know they want you to be pussies on the court you know soft as cotton and you know want you to have good team spirit and all that but what happened to i don't have no friends on the basketball court i'm trying to play to win a championship and i'm trying to teach these young bucks you know how to win or whatever you know i mean we we cool as a motherfucker off the basketball court but you understand that i got to teach these young bucks how to win because they in the trenches with me all season long and i got to stick up for my teammates and since him and rondo is the leader of the team uh you know because they they got the highest iq uh, why wasn't LeBron James over there sticking up with his teammates, you know, right or wrong? I could chastise you behind closed doors, but, you know, right now, today, in the public, it's all for one and one for all. The Reaper keep it 1,000. That's what you taught, you know, in being a team, but nobody seems to realize this today, but the Reaper, you know, I mean, he gonna go over there and put his arm around his buddy that's supposed to be his brother that he go on vacation with this is business this ain't got nothing to do with our personal relationship you know lebron james but lebron james i'm gonna tell y'all what's happening here lebron james been sick of rondo ever since he got there because rondo is smarter than he is and know how to set up the team better than he do and lebron james feels challenged by that you know so he thought he wanted rondo but he don't want rondo you know and he feels challenged by that so that's why he didn't stick up for rondo now you will see lonzo playing more than rondo the reaper keep it 1000 <laughs> and when they asked lonzo about it he said i'm glad that them that they just ain't thinking about me you know don't you think about me leave me out of it you know because you know i know my three ball ain't falling and, <laughs> and i'm trying to get back into playing shape and i know my job is in jeopardy because rondo is here the reaper keep it 1000 <laughs> so don't think don't look at me rabbit don't look at me <laughs> <laughs> but Lonzo played pretty good, you know, tonight off the bench. He had 14 points and 50% shooting, and his three ball was falling for once. You know, the Reaper keep it 1,000. But, you know, I mean... They talk about fighting in the NBA. Fighting in the NBA, you know, ain't what it used to be because, you know, I mean, the most memorable fight that I remember is Kermit Washington, Rudy Tom Donovich. I mean, that nigga knocked his dick a loose from his body. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> Rudy was on one side and his dick was on the other. The Reaper keep it 1,000. And, you know, I remember some fights with Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley Shaq, you know, Charles Barkley, you know, with Bill Lambeer, Charles Barkley with whoever. Charles Barkley couldn't fight. Charles Barkley was, you know, a mean player. Have you seen a mean dude that can't fight? The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you gonna get your ass whooped. He was just a mean dude, and he would start a lot of stuff, but when you got into the shit, Charles Barkley threw punches over his shoulder. He have his head down, and, you know, he'd be punching. If you ever saw the fights, he fight like a girl. The Reaper keep it 1,000. All that shit he talk. And talking about Draymond Green, Draymond Green would have beat the shit out of him. The Reaper keep it 1,000. So would LeBron James, you know, and Barkley sitting up there talking all that nonsense about them. Another big dude that can't fight either is Shaq. You know, because, you know, I know Shaq got into it with Alvin Robertson. Shaq always trying to fight somebody way littler than him. Shaq, if, if the dude is big as him almost and you know that's kind of impossible but what i'm saying is if he got some of the same hyphen some girth on him shaq ain't fighting nobody mm -mm. 
Shaq wasn't that mean like that and trying to fight people when there was true centers in the NBA. The Reaper keep it 1,000, but when these 6'8", six, 6'9", six, guys that he outweighed by 100 pounds or he fight a guard, he won, he fought Scott Skiles and the white dude went down and tackled him and was turning on him because you know why he tackled him? Because when we on the ground, we the same size. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> You ever fight one of them big niggas and ball them up on the ground? Mm-mm. Yeah, shoot. They be big and you ball they ass up. Because when we on the ground, nigga, we the same size. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> so, you know, that's why Barkley ducked up under that punch and pulled him off his feet. And, you know, he went down like 10 tons of bricks. And Barkley was on top of him because... When we on the ground, we the same size. But if that haymaker hook would have hit Barkley, it would have knocked him up in the stands. Because <laughs> Barkley can't fight. Shit. That nigga would have been out till next week. You know, and, uh, you know, I remember back in the day the Kent Benson Kareem fight. Abdul Jabbar didn't get into too many fights. I mean, you know, didn't nobody fuck with Kareem because when you looked in his eyes, you could tell he wasn't all there. <laughs> Don't Kareem look like a space cadet? I know he's smart, but Kareem looked like a space cadet. They said, oh, no, we can't have this dude staring up in space or whatever, you know, that's coaching our team. You know, when you look at Kareem's eyes, it looked like he's a few cares short of a six-pack. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> so, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, him and Ken Benson, Ken Benson elbowed Kareem. Kareem went down. You know, he elbowed him in the stomach. Abdul Jabbar come, come, came back down court and threw one of them girl punches. <laughs> <laughs> one of them wild haymaker punches. You know, I mean, like he had some sugar in his tank. <laughs> he connected it. Kit Benson went to sleep. The Reaper keep it 1,000. You know, I remember Bad Max used to go up in the crowd and the stands. You know, some niggas like to fight up in the crowd still to fight the NBA player. They be bad at an NBA player or whatever, and then they grow up in the crowd because, you know, as tough as Ron Artest is, and we know Ron Artest ain't all there. Ron Artest wasn't throwing no punches, you know, um... You know, with the malice in the palace. You know, I mean, how come he didn't fight, you know, uh, Ben Wallace? You know, him and Ben Wallace was going at it. He was too scared to fight Ben Wallace, but when a beer cup, little beer cup hits you, you're going to run up in the stands and try to, you know, deal with a fan. You know, I mean, I thought that was the weakest move there is. The Reaper keep it 1,000. I mean, and you're supposed to be a tough guy. Go after Ben Wallace, you know, but you would have got your dick knocked loose from your body and your tough guy image would have been over. The Reaper keep it 1,000. And so you didn't go after Ben Wallace. Well, you know, you know who you went after. You went after a defenseless fan. And I just thought that was weak, you know, with the uh, Ron Artest fight, you know. But there's been many fights uh, in the NBA or whatever. I mean, Steven Jackson was just plum crazy in that. And he had stood on top of the car firing a Uzi at the club. And he still be smoking weed. <laughs> On his Instagram page. I don't know how he's an analyst for the NBA, but, you know, I guess they condone, you know, this kind of behavior now. Because <laughs> weed is legal, but it still shouldn't be legal in the private sector. And, you know, I mean, this nigga be smoking what I do is what he do. And, uh, you know, stacks, you know, Steven Jackson, I like Jack. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, hey, he shouldn't be doing that. And, uh, I remember, you know, some other fights in the NBA. Dennis Rodman, you know, Alonzo Mourning, they never did fight. They get balled up on the floor, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, Alonzo Mourning was weak-minded. And Dennis Rodman used to get up under his skin, just like he did Frank Bukowski for the Sonics or whatever. The, you know, Michael Jordan wanted Dennis Rodman because he was plum crazy. And then, you know, everybody wanted to get at him. He could get up under somebody's skin psychologically. And then he could play also the Reaper Keep It 1000. So, you know, that's why Jordan wanted him. He gave him, a, he gave him an advantage and everything like that. You know, so they, uh, that's what I find interesting. And then...
you know, Alonzo Mourning was weak minded. I mean, anybody that talks smack to him, you know, could throw him off his game like Larry Johnson did with the LJ. The LJ, him and LJ got into it, you know, when the Miami Heat was up or whatever, you know, and uh, Alonzo Mourning blew that series being weak minded because, uh, you know, Larry Johnson. Both of them used to play for the Charlotte Hornets, you know, when Larry Johnson was Grandma Ma. And, you know, and Lonzo Mourning, you know, he came in as a skinny Georgetown kid. And then the next season, he had took some performance enhancing drugs <laughs> and pumped himself up, you know, to be, you know, all world. You know what I'm saying? The Reaper keep it what does it. And then, you know, uh, I remember the Larry Bird, Dr. J fight, you know, where Larry Bird was toasting Dr. J. Now, I'm going to let the truth be told. And Julius Irving, one of my favorite players, the ambassador in the, of the NBA, the first one to was a high riser, high flyer, you know, I mean, you know, Dr. J was a, a motherfucker with those uh, New Jersey Nets and then the ABA. See, people don't remember that. I mean, he revolutionized the game. The Reaper keep it 1000. I can't believe that the what Dr. J done done for the NBA because you wouldn't have had your Jordans or your David Thompson's or whatever. David Thompson and Dr. J made it cool to be a high flyer. The Reaper keep it 1,000 and hang in the air and, you know, and where you come down and they still be up, you know, I mean, defy gravity like that. And, and then Dr. J won a bunch of titles in the ABA, you know, when he was a young man. So, you know, Dr. J played bigger than what he was. He was 6'6", but he could have played the power forward too because Julius had big hands and, you know, double size and, you know, I mean, he just played a big man's game and, you know, he had that short jumper too, you know, but, you know, Jordan came in and, you know, I mean, they called him Bear Jordan because, you know, he was like a 747. He was like a, it was like a, 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 what do they call that? Dr. J was an airplane, but Michael Jordan was a space shuttle. He just went up a little bit higher. <laughs> The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> so, so he went up out of the galaxy, you know. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, uh, I mean, but Dr. J, you know, made it cool to be a high flyer or whatever. But, you know, him and Larry Bird got into a fight. And, uh, you know, it was because Larry Bird was cooking Dr. J. It was one of them same things with Rondo and Chris Paul. You know, Chris Paul was just cooking Rondo. The Reaper keep it 1,000. And, uh, you know, I mean, the Lakers was going to lose that game anyway, you know, because they had too much at the guard. I mean, the Rockets got the best guard tandem in the NBA, and they just cook you, you know. And then, you know, it's a toss-up between Portland and Washington, you know. I mean, Bradley Beal and uh, John Wall is a good combination, but so is Damian Lillard and C.J. McCullough. The Reaper keep it 1,000. So, you know, I mean, we got some good guard play in the NBA, you know, right now. And, you know, but, you know, um, you know, they had these melees. These ain't really fights now. You know, you see uh, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler can come to the Minnesota Timberwolves, you know, locker room and call everybody out and nobody kick his ass or try to kick his ass. The Reaper keep it 1,000 because, you know, you got a lot of beta men. You know, Big Cat should have, Big Cat, if you the leader of the team, you know, you should have jumped in his ass. The Reaper keep it 1,000. So, you know, Jimmy Butler let it known that he playing with a bunch of punks there. You know, I mean, he take the third team and beat the first team. The Reaper keep it 1,000. And, you know, if Jimmy Butler is the standard for being a a tough guy and crazy in the NBA, we in trouble. <laughs> Cause somebody would have been done whoop Jimmy Butler's ass. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> you think he would go in the locker room and fuck with Zebo or, or DeMarcus Cousins and call him out like that? They beat the fuck out of Jimmy Butler. The Reaper keep it 1,000. He knew he was dealing with some soft ass niggas. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so if he the standard, you know, if Jimmy Butler went in there with Z-Bo, you think if Z-Bo was on his team or, 
you know, <laughs> or DeMarcus Cousins. <laughs> you think Jimmy Butler would have went in there with all that attitude? The Reaper keep it 1,000. Hell no. <laughs> he would have got his dick knocked they loose from his body. <laughs> He did that because he could. That's why I don't look at Jimmy Butler as being a tough guy. Because if you're a tough guy, you're going to get into it with some tough guys. The Reaper keep it 1,000. And, uh, you know, I remember another fight, you know, uh, which was Kobe Bryant and Chris Childs. Kobe was talking all that shit and thought Chris Childs, Chris Childs was from the streets. He had been shot and everything. And, uh, you know, I mean... Kobe was talking that shit. Yap, 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 yap. And when he yapped, Chris Charles took his fist and busted him in his face. The Reaper keep it 1,000 and beat the fuck out of Kobe. Knocked his dick a loose right there in New York City. And that's why I don't understand, you know, I guess people look at people's status now. Because Kobe Bryant, you know, later on in his career was known as a tough guy and would come in there and cuss everybody out and do everything. You know, uh, the Reaper keep it 1,000. I mean, Kobe was not a tough guy. Anybody knows Kobe Bryant, you know, not the crying on TV Kobe Bryant. He is not a tough guy. The Reaper keep it 1,000, you know, but in today's NBA, he could be. He wouldn't have did that when he first came in the NBA because somebody would have knocked his, it, Eddie Jones would have knocked his dick a loose from his body or Nick Van Exel. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> Kobe wasn't doing no shit like that. You know, because the NBA has changed and most people know that people will not fight and throw punches. This is why this is such a big, you know, thing with Chris Paul and Ray John Rondo, because they actually threw a punch that connected this time. <laughs> Usually when they say a bunch of fights, they be pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. You know, I mean, because to be an alpha man and to be a man's man and a, or a tough guy man now, you know, the Reaper always say, is not, you know, is, is is people don't want you to be that. They want you to be a beta meek it man. The Reaper keep it one thought, oh, I don't want no trouble. Uh, uh, you know, going about your way, you know, and somebody done disrespected you, you know, totally. Now, I'm saying that you should think about what you're doing, but what I'm saying these is athletes and, you know, sometimes emotions fly high and sometimes they get in the fights. And, you know, I think... Uh, Brandon Ingram going to be on the worst end of this, you know, I mean, you know, because that nigga was acting like a woman. So I know he was raised by a single parent. The Reaper keep it 1000. Brandon Ingram was acting like a woman in all of this, you know, and Rajon Rondo, you know, he was just getting toasted and emotions ran high. Brandon Ingram, you know, going, he was running up in everybody's face and I don't see why he was so agitated. You know, he was agitated. I don't see why, you know, I mean, they better give that nigga a drug test because he may be on some weed and you know you be emotional and high strung with your weed. Because <laughs> you know when you 6'9", 101 pounds, you shouldn't be trying to fight nobody. The Reaper keep it 1,000. A 12-year-old kid to come out of the audience and ball your big ass up, nigga. <laughs> 101 pounds. That nigga the skinniest nigga on the court. And trying to fight everybody. The Reaper keep it 1,000. The rest is 50, 65, and, you know, 5, 9, you know, 160 pounds in the ball that nigga up. He won't be able to get the referee off of him. The Reaper. <laughs> that's the that's that nigga skinnier. You know when Kevin Durant first came in the league, right? That nigga skinnier than Kevin Durant. I mean, when Kevin Durant first came in the league, you know, people was you know mocking him, saying that Durant, you know, um, you know, he couldn't bench press, you know, a uh, hundred and some pounds. You know, I mean. They, they said they took the weights off there and put the, just the bar out there and that nigga was struggling and needed a spotter. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> I thought I would never see, you know, a nigga skinnier than Kevin Durant. <laughs> but I, they came out with Brandon Ingram. <laughs> How do the nigga...
I lift the basketball up? It looked like a toothpick with the basketball. The Reaper keep it 1,000. I mean, because, you know, I mean, Kevin Durant was, you know, the skittiest superstar that I ever seen. Now, you know, I mean, back in the day, they had Iceman Gervin. I mean, he was pinned thin, but I, you know, Iceman Gervin was pinned thin, but, you know, I still don't think he was skinny as Kevin Durant. Or, and Brandon Ingram, he's skinnier than Iceman Gervin and, uh, you know, Kevin Durant. So, I, you know, I don't know, but I think that, you know, um, you know, Brandon Ingram shouldn't be trying to fight nobody. And Chris Paul is a pit bull. The Reaper keep it 1,000. I mean, Chris Paul, you know, nobody fucks with Chris Paul. You know, I, you, if you remember when Austin River, Doc River's son, was talking and Chris Paul, you know, opened the secret door to the Clippers locker room and confronted that nigga. The Reaper keep it 1,000. Now, I wondered why, you know, Chris Paul needed James Harden and, uh, you know, Gerald Green to go over there with him and confront him when this nigga looked like Christopher Williams. The Reaper keep it 1,000. He's seeing promises, promises we don't keep. He may, he may have promised to kick Chris Paul's ass. He may, Chris Paul was a clipper at one time. They may got into it and Austin Rivers may have heads. Don't think just because a nigga light-skinned that he won't whoop your ass. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> because why did he need, you know, James Harden and... And Gerald Green, little following ass, hey, the, the birthday cake, Gerald Green. I ain't never seen no nigga. He put up a birthday candle and blew it out and did duck the ball. <laughs> they should have checked that nigga's piss then. The Reaper keep it 1,000 because he, he damn sure looked like he smoked. <laughs> Watch me, I'm going to put a, 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 a cupcake up there, and I'm going to call this the birthday cake dunk, you know, and uh, I'm going to blow the candle out, and then I'm going to uh, blow out the candle, and then I'm going to duck the ball. You know, that's some showmanship. <laughs> but the birthday cake, Gerald Green went over there with him, and, you know, and since Prince Paul is the ambassador of the NBA, you know, and he's supposed to be the director of player personnel, and he out there fighting. So, you know, uh, Rondo's suspension, you know, going to be higher than he is, and the Lakers done lost uh, Ingram and uh, Rondo. And the Lakers, you know, unless they really get it together, I mean, out west, they don't look like they're going to make no noise. The Reaper keep it 1,000. There's a lot of teams out west, and uh, the Lakers don't look like, you know, uh, they're going to make a lot of noise out west, you know, because, you know, LeBron is playing with a bunch of young guys. And then, you know, LeBron is, you know, hey, he's a beta male. You know, his emotions are going to come out. I feel sorry for Rondo now. Rondo going to be waived and, you know, by midseason or whatever. Because him and LeBron going to cra clash. Because LeBron showed, you know, where his team loyalty was at. Because he went and grabbed Chris Paul and walked him over there. And he should have been with his team. And I think that there's going to be a lot of headbutting because Rondo is a very smart player and he know the game. And LeBron James don't like players like that. Why you think a lot of players don't want to play with LeBron James? You know, the Reaper keep it 1,000. If LeBron James was such this great player and everything like that, just like Kobe, you know, nobody wanted to play with him. You know why? Because they ball dominant and they hog the ball and they want things done their way and you have to play in their system. And not that, you know, hey, people wanted to come play with Michael Jordan. You know, people wanted to come play with Magic Johnson. These was leaders. You know, you got better when you played with them. You know, I, I'm just saying, people wanted to come play with Larry Bird. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, but LeBron James is put up there on this pedestal. This is what I'm saying, you know, and uh, nobody wants to play with LeBron. Why? I, they say he passed the ball, he do everything, but if you really look at it, you know, just like Isaiah Thomas said, we didn't practice, we didn't do nothing. And if you really look at it, you know, uh, LeBron, it's, it's going to be LeBron James's way. And people say, well, you know, um, I, I don't know what they're trying to do in the media. They say, but he wins or whatever. 
LeBron James is three and five or three and six in the finals and would be two and seven. So how do you say he win, you know, and this is working? You know, nobody wants to play with him. You know, the media, if you believe the sports media or whatever, they try to put LeBron James up there with Jordan, which is a monstrosity. Because if you look at the NBA today, just look at it. There's no defense and anybody can average a triple double. So what Russell Westbrook did, it wasn't a great feat because he never would have did that long time ago nobody plays defense in the NBA if you look at you know I think I was watching the game and you know a Denver Nuggets center had 35 12 and 12 he had done something uh he hadn't nobody had done that since Wilt Chamberlain so that lets you know and he's a no name you know center really you know what I'm saying? A European player, you know, and then there was another player, you know, Ben Simmons, average triple doubles or whatever. And you know what? There's a lot of players that get triple doubles nowadays. And that's why LeBron James can play at a high level in his 16th or 17th year like he do, because there is a lot of players that can score numbers now. You know, it's the game done transition to a bunch of, you know what? The shots that they shooting today in the NBA, right? They would they would be uh, called bad shots. People be pulling up. They have three people down, a three on one. They won't pass it in for the layup. They will pull up for the three, and they have numbers. The Reaper keep it one thousand. So those was considered bad shots, you know, a uh, long time ago. But everybody practice on their three ball now because the game done switched over to the European style of game, and nobody plays no defense just like in Europe. So if you can shoot a three ball, you can play in the NBA and you ain't got to play no defense. The, in the old NBA, you had to play a little defense because you had to play one on one and you had to be able to create your own shot off the dribble, which takes skill. A creator uh, of they, they have switched the game around that if you create your shot off the dribble, you are useless now. That's why Carmelo Anthony is useless because they want him to sit out there and spot up threes and wait for James Harden to do his thing and want Carmelo to play a European style of game. That doesn't take any talent. All you do is got to practice on your three ball and you will make it to the NBA. The NBA is like the Euro League now. So these niggas that's putting up these numbers now, you know, they ain't real numbers because you ain't got to play no defense. You know, you ain't got to lock nobody down. You ain't got to have no skill to be able to cre create your own shot. You just do like Alonzo Ball and them go stand in the corner. And when somebody penetrate and kick, you got to be ready to hit a three. You know, and they call that. It's just been so much role reversal in the world today. You know, where, <laughs> where talent... It's called no talent now, you know, and and if you got talent, like if you was a rapper who wrote your own songs and created your own rhymes or whatever, and you could really rap like Rakim or Tupac or, you know, or Snoop Doggy Dog, you know, or all of these rappers that could write it down and create their own stuff off the top of their head, they're useless now. You got your Drakes, who is the Miller, Manili Vanilli of rap that somebody write his shit and, and rap it out for him and tell him how to do it, and that's how he do it. And, you know, I'm just saying, you got a lot of these uh, white rappers in the game, you know what I'm saying, that can't really rap or whatever, that don't don't really have no talent. The only one is Eminem, probably. And you see, he useless now. He ain't made nothing in a while, because if you got talent now... <laughs> You're useless. It's role reversal. So if you can create your own shot and that, then you go work on your ball handling and your skills and this, that, and the other, they say, oh, no, you ain't going to make it because we just need you to stand out there and shoot threes like Steph Curry, you know. I mean, but Steph is a, is a, Steph can go off the dribble and got handles. He's different. Don't get me wrong. But most of them just stand in the corner and wait on the three ball. And if you can't shoot the three ball, they say, you know, you're useless or whatever. You know, the three ball was considered a bad shot. You come down and pull up on the three and you got a three on one, you ain't going to be playing because that's a dumb shot. But the, 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 you know, like I said, it's role reversal. The dumb shot is the good shot now. The Reaper keep it 1,000. The non-talent person is the talented person now. <laughs> 
And you know what? <laughs> and if you're a good person, you're evil. And if you're an evil person, you're good because <laughs> all you do is got to look at, you know, all the police shootings and all the injustices that go on in America. The Reaper keep it 1000. I mean, if you got a value system and a moral system, you are a bad person. And if you, you know, are, are somebody that's, you know, evil, you are considered a good person. You know, the world has changed today. The Reaper keep it 1000. Now the Reaper done ran his mouth about that kind of stuff. And I done ran my mouth a long time. And I done forgot, you know, about the lady that rides with me. The lady that rides right beside the Reaper. The lady that brings the trending topics in the news. Sweet and sassy. How you doing this morning, sassy? I know it's four o'clock in the morning and the Reaper done ran his mouth most of the show, you know, but I had to get some things off my chest. I know you sleepier than a motherfucker, but we gonna try to do some of these trending topics. What you got on those hot trending topics today, today, all of this morning, here for the Reaper. Okay, we'll start off in South Carolina. South Carolina. A man is facing attempted murder charges after shooting his teen cousin. He warned not to eat his salt and vinegar potato chips. They called it a salt and vinegar. A salt and vinegar. You know, I mean, this was a nigga. You know y'all like to put salt and, and vinegar in barbecue sauce and everything and hot sauce on salt and vinegar potato chips. The Reaper keep it 1,000. And so, you know, he pistol whipped. He pistol whipped his cousin because he ate his salt and vinegar potato chips, you know. Now, I wonder, was that worth 20 years? The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> Over a grab bag, you know, a salt and vinegar potato chips. Was they the Wrap chips like Fetty Wap have. <laughs> How Fetty had jalapeno and cheddar, honey and barbecue and, you know, and, uh, you know, sour cream and onion. And, you know, he had all the flavors that, you know, they like down south and that, you know, black folks like to eat. You know, because, you know, y'all like honey and barbecue and, you know, because, hey, Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce sold out because it was sweet and it was tangy. You know, black folks like sweet and tangy stuff, you know. Oh, it's got, and it's got to be spicy. The Reaper keep it 1,000. You know, I hate. Niggas will put hot sauce on some baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> they put hot sauce right up over some, some cornbread. Uh, we, 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 we put hot sauce on everything. You know, the Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> And it's got to be Franks or Sriracha. <laughs> you know that, you know, the Asians done, you know, they done took over the, the hot sauce pendulum because I see a lot of you niggas buying Sriracha now, you know, instead of the Franks, Bobby, the Franks, the Franks hot sauce, you know. I mean, you give a nigga a bottle of Franks hot sauce, they, you, you can tell when you at a, a black restaurant because... You know what? They had a bottle of Frank's hot sauce because they know that's what you niggas like to eat on your chicken and your ribs and all of that. So if you got if, if you got a restaurant and you frying fish, you get you, you cook fish and chicken, you had better have a bottle of Frank's hot sauce there. Less a nigga will beat you stupid. The real <laughs> Well, you ain't gonna get no business. He <laughs> said. Say yeah, you have a you have anything up on the table <laughs> but a bottle of Franks and you fry you got you frying chicken and fish, a nigga gonna be offended. He gonna say, Yeah, his fish is good and everything, but you got that other hot sauce up there. He need to get some red hot. But most of the restaurants I go to now, you know they got the bottle of Frank's hot sauce up there, and you know a lot of black people is transitioning into the uh, sriracha sauce. You know, I don't know what them agents put in that shit. Mm. It's got a funny taste to it, but it don't taste as, you know, like the Franks. But a lot of people is transitioning to it. Mm. 
So this nigga pistol whipped his cousin because he ate his hot sauce and vinegar potato chips and over a dollar sixty nine cent a grab bag chips he done got twenty years to really <laughs> a salt and vinegar. <laughs> Where was he at? Cleveland? <laughs> Where he had to be a nap. <laughs> Cause some of them Midwestern cities, you niggas do some ignorant shit. The Reaper keep it 1,000 and call it the principal of the thing. You know, I don't I don't know what the principal of the thing is. You know, the nigga stole 50 cent from me or ate my salt and vinegar potato chips. It's just the principal of the thing. You know, I'm gonna whoop his ass. I'm gonna get 20 years for a bag of potato chips. What kind of principles is that? <laughs> I'm going to shoot him and pistol whip him over a bag of potato chips. <laughs> it sounds like your priorities is mixed up. And nigga, you don't got no principles. <laughs> it was the principal of the thing. <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> California. California, hey. A man tries to buy a 75 cent bag of almond m and When his card is declined, he smacks the cashier upside his head just the register and pushes down everything in his sight. Uh, he had a meltdown. Shoot, you know that nigga was from Compton. The Reaper keep it what? <laughs> he was from City of Compton. <laughs> or Watts. Or Eagle Hood. Eagle Hood always up to no good. <laughs> Even Hollywood try to get a piece, like Dr. Dre said. Shit. Because if a nigga, if a nigga ain't got 75 cent on his debit card to buy some M&Ms with peanuts, that must have been the small pack. He wasn't even buying the jumbo pack because he said, I ain't got a dollar on there. Oh, man, I think I got 75 cents on, uh, you know, I got a taste for some Eminem with peanuts. Let's roll up in here to the bitty bot. <laughs> the shit was the kind. You know that you really need a job or you ain't working hard enough or you need a job if you ain't got 75 cents on your debit card. And you know how I know this was a nigga. Because he was buying the M&M's with peanuts. <laughs> I don't know. Them other M&M's, I don't even know. I don't know why they sell. Because <laughs> a nigga always likes something with some nuts in it. <laughs> so, you know, these was the, all you do is got to put some chocolate with some nuts. And you know that you ain't working hard enough or you really need a job if you ain't got 75 cent on your debit card. And then he want to go in there and smack the cashier around just because, you know, his card was declined. Who was this? Cat Williams? Because <laughs> Cat would, Cat been all on TV and every time you hear, you know, <laughs> somebody get smacked around and see the cashier, somebody work at a restaurant <laughs> with Cat Williams on TV. <laughs> he smacked the target worker all around. Was that over some m and with peanuts? <laughs> you know, Cat live in California. <laughs> the nigga is four foot two and always talking about whooping somebody's ass. <laughs> Cat Williams was talking about whooping Faison Love's ass. And you see how Faison, you know, grabbed that, you know, nigga around at the airport and swung him around. Faison looked at like a silverback gorilla. Swinging him around. Now, what you would think he would have done to Cat Williams? Cat Williams always tried to be in the melee with somebody. So I said, who is this? Cat Williams? <laughs> Smacking the target worker around. You know if... You ain't got 75 cent on your debit card. <laughs> you know you need to start working harder. And then that was frustration. You know, so he smacked the cashier around. What else you got? Okay, in Tennessee. Tennessee. Uh-oh. A man goes after his son with a chainsaw and ends up losing his own leg. <laughs> when he came at his son with a chainsaw, 
His son ran his ass over with a lawnmower. <laughs> now I know why my cousin want to leave Tennessee, because they got a lot of hillbillies there. The Reaper TP 1000, he said, Billy Bob, I know you've been over here seeing Sue. You should have stayed on your own ranch. I'm going to cut your fucking nuts off with this goddamn chainsaw. <laughs> You son of a bitch! I'm gonna cut your fucking nuts off! Oh, I said, oh no! He's chasing Pa with the goddamn chainsaw! You know, hey, Duke, get on the tractor! And he had one of those big swing blades on the back that can cut off, you know, um, you know, weeds that's 10 feet high. He said, now get up close to him and you pivot that son of a bitch! And you cut that fucker, it's gonna go across that fucker's legs and cut that fucker's legs off. He's trying to chase Pa with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's some hillbilly shit. The Reaper Keep It 1000. Who was that? Jed Clappett? <laughs> you know they got some hillbillies down in Tennessee. And anytime that <laughs> you chasing somebody with a chainsaw. <laughs> Who was this, Leatherface on the Taste of Chainsaw Massacre? <laughs> that motherfucker was cutting up everybody with a chainsaw. <laughs> that motherfucker was cutting up people because he was ugly and couldn't get no pussy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things some pussy can cure. The Reaper keep it 1,000. <laughs> pussy is therapeutic. So try getting your shub sometime, you know, and uh, that's what it was. You know, either this was over some pussy or they didn't get no pussy. The Reaper keep it 1,000, just like Leatherface. What else you got? Okay, in New York. In New York, New York, New York. In New York. Mm, what's done happened in New York, New York? State troopers pull over a car because a child is not in a straight seat. But they got more than they bargained for. Uh, the three-year-old handed the officers his mom's bag of weed. Mm. Well... You know, they done legalize weed now and everybody have it, you know. But if you're out there copping some weed or whatever and you get pulled over in a police car, do not hand it to your three-year-old or try to put it in his car seat. The Reaper keep it 1,000 because a three-year-old going to say, oh, well, what about this, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> mommy, you put this back here in my car seat. I don't want it. <laughs> A three-year-old is innocent, <laughs> and he done pulled out the evidence to bust his mama. She said, oh, no, baby, now you just put yourself in foster care, and you got mama busted on a lot of charges. <laughs> <laughs> Let this be a lesson to you. You know, you shouldn't be, you know, smoking drugs or doing drugs, you know, when you have kids anyway, or especially around kids. And that's the problem, you know, I mean, introducing your baby, you know, to drugs or whatever. They, I mean, they probably was blowing it up in the car or she was just coming from copping it, you know, at the uh, weed house. And they had been staking it out and watching it. You know, it was either one or the other, you know, and I know they be going to these dispensaries and stuff like that. But, you know, why you think they opened them up? Because, you know, they can bust you. Wake up call, you know, you can be still busted for driving up under the influence. That's of a substance that's impairing you to drive. The Reaper keep it 1,000. It ain't got to be alcohol. That's for some of you weed smokers. And then it is not accepted in the private sector, which means jobs. And it will affect future endeavors, which is money. The Reaper keep it 1,000. So just to give you some education on that. So, you know, hey, if you plan on being employed or you plan on working a job, you know, you got to give up some of them habits and weed is one of them. The Reaper keep it 1000. So, you know, that's just for some of you to, to give some of you some education that don't know that think just because weed is legalized that I can smoke weed and, you know, you won't be busted for it or you can get a job with it. What else you got? 
Okay, in Michigan. Michigan. Angry bowlers attack employees with bar stools and a bowling ball after being asked to leave, and one of the employees was knocked out with a bowling ball. Well, you know, at some of these bowling places or whatever, you know, uh, you know, they got bars and. You know, what's interesting, you know, with bowling or whatever, I don't with bowling with some people and some people don't even know how to keep score. The Reaper keep it 1000. They just do it for an activity to get out or whatever, you know, and have fun. And it's just like golf. They go golfing just because so they can look a certain way. But some most some people don't even know how to keep score, you know, and I don't call bowling or golf a sport because anything you can do when you're 60 years old, I don't call a sport. The Reaper keep it 1000. It's, it's mainly a hobby you know so some people like to get out and they like to enjoy things with the hobby or whatever and so you know and sometimes alcohol is involved and sometimes you know chairs be thrown and people you know get in the fights you know who was this al bundy because <laughs> old married with children and all of that you know he was in a bowling league they be in bowling leagues and stuff like that and, you know, they, people get competitive and they get drunk or whatever, and then they want to fight. What else you got? In Florida. Florida. A hungry 22-year-old was arrested for helping his mother with sausages. He demanded his mom to make him dinner. She said she was busy, but when she did uh, get up and cook him a meal, she accidentally bumped into him. He threw sausages at her, hitting her in the eye, and then he put his hands around her neck and pushed her. Well, this was a mother who was enabling her child, you know. I mean, because he's 22 years old and he probably living with her and he's a single parent. And what I know by most single parents is they make their sons they men. You know, they let them get away with stuff. They be arguing with their girlfriends. And then if the son don't work, they give them money. They, they even pay their high note and they be living in their basement at home or in their room. And then the son starts to act like the man. So when the mama say something, or whatever, you know, he gets offended or whatever. And if he's smoking weed or on drugs, he will go upside and comb her head. The Reaper keep it 1000 or cuss her out or whatever. And but this is a woman who's been enabling her son. I can see right through this to be who he is. And, you know, this dude is asking his mama to buy him sausages and he 22 years old. He should have a job or whatever, or she done spoiled him too much. And, you know, he should be buying her sausages at the age of 22 because at 22 years old, you should be out of college. And I, I guarantee you this guy ain't going to college. He probably after high school just sitting up smoking weed, having a tough time finding a job or career choices. And she been enabling him and babying him ever since he was a baby. So therefore, when she don't give him what he want, he flips out and goes upside her head. I've seen this many a time, you know, uh, and, you know, I would suggest that women stop enabling your sons and stop trying to make them as your man because even in you know uh our community you know sons be trying to be their mama's man you know tupac made a song even though i sell rocks it still feels good putting money in your mailbox and a lot of black men went to jail over that thinking that they helping out mama for her bad choices you know your parents is supposed to take care of you you ain't supposed to take care of your kids your kids ain't supposed to take care of them or these parents been enabling their kids, you know, uh, to, to be who they is, you know, and not lighting the fire up on them and not expecting anything out of them. You know, the Reaper keep it 1000. And when they get old enough, they resent you for it. What else you got? OK, in Texas, Texas, a man breaks into a woman's house, leaving a naked picture of himself that he took with her camera. A used condom and a note saying, I've been watching you. He also stole her underwear. This sounds like a stalker, a sexual predator. And like I said, the Reaper got, say they got some drugs out now that is making these men take their clothes off and show their nakedness to women. You know, it's a shame, but this is what happens. You know, when you get drunk or you take male enhancement drugs or you're on some kind of drug and you want to show your nakedness and stalk women. Women beware. 
You know, because it takes good men like the Reaper to keep these sexual predators off of you because we done read a lot of stories where a lot of men want to show their nakedness because they can't get no pussy. The Reaper keep it 1,000. You know, they sitting up with an idle mind and, <laughs> and they can't get no pussy, I guess, because, you know, as soon as they get on drugs or all these male enhancement things out, they want to go out and stalk women and then they want to, you know... um you know, take pictures of their penis and whatever, and, you know, uh, you know, send notes to women. So, you know, beware of these sexual predators. I hope he get just what he deserved. Big Bubba gonna be waiting on to bring that ass on in here and take a picture of that dick for me. <laughs> I want to see that dick. No, no. <laughs> these niggas, these, these people, these people need to go straight to the joint. That's what they need to do. All right, Sassy, we're going to cut it short because we're running short on time and the Reaper has ran his mouth too much. We would like you to enjoy your Sunday and subscribe to the Reaper because we bringing good messages and doing good things here at Reaper. And go to our website, jazzbotareaper.com, and purchase some of our merchandise. Reaper, we do it rough. We do it raw. We do it real. And like we always say, we don't give a fuck. Less than a fuck about you haters. Reaper out. Peace.